is the cerebrum? The cerebrum is the largest re region of the brain. It uh, connects the right and left hemisphere. Um, the base of the uh, cerebrum is called the corpus callosum and it contains 200 million neurons that connect the right and left hemispheres. Uh, its, its function is movement, sensation, learning, and memory. Perfect. And that is where the two hemispheres talk to each other. Yes, they talk to each other. other. It kind of divides yep. to the right and left. <coughs> Alright, any questions on that? This one's the frontal lobe and it's kind of in the top front right up here. And we thought it looked like noodles. Um, within it are the motor areas which generate impulses for voluntary movement and movement of the hands and feet. <clears throat> and it's also concerned with learned motor skills like tying your shoes, for example. Um, and the temporal lobe is found on the side of the brain down here. And it looks like noodles as well. And it receives impulses from receptors in the navel cavities for the sense of smell. And then the auditory areas receive impulses from the ear for hearing. Yeah, so it does hearing interpret sound. And it's right above your ear. Same place as the temporal bone. So now we're talking about the temporal lobes, one on each side. And the oh, oh. <laughs> the parietal lobe, um, it's on the side of the brain. It's split in the middle. There's two sides. Um, it looks like noodles. The function is the general sensory areas in the parietal lobes receives impulses and feels sensation. The left area for right side of the body and right side of the area for the left side. Yeah, and the other thing about the parietal is it tells us where you, the position of your body is. So that's what tells you that you're kind of leaning against a counter and I'm standing straight up. Um, it also tells you, it's what gives you your sensory information that comes from your skin and your internal organs. So parietal lobe is right where the parietal bones are on each side. So that's gonna give the sensory information from your skin and the position of where your body is along with um, great thing she said. <laughs> um, and then she talked about it switching. So the right side of your brain controls the left side of your body. The left side of your brain controls the right side of your body. Okay, here goes the thalamus. Here she goes. <laughs> the thalamus. <laughs> this little beaten part here is the thalamus. Functions. And Julie is going to tell us about the functions of the oh, okay. thalamus. She will. Um, it regulates the subconscious aspects of sensation. Um, parts are also involved in alertness and awareness, and others contribute to memory. And it kind of like um, takes pieces of little pieces of a picture and makes it so that instead of um, you going oh, I'm going to touch this, and that's cold, and that's cold, so I have to do something about it unless I want my finger to freeze, and blah, 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 blah. It coordinates all those things and gives your brain the whole big picture of what's happening, and so you're not getting a bunch of little details about sensory stuff. You're getting a broader picture, and all that happens really fast so that you can react. Yeah, and the thalamus sends the information to the, you know, if it's something to do with hearing, sends mm -hmm. it over to the temporal lobe, something about spatial awareness, it's going to send it up to the parietal lobe. So it's, it's kind of, it sends, it's the main place that the information goes, and the thalamus decides where it's going to go in the brain and what it's going to do with that information. The hypothalamus? And then the, yeah. The hypothalamus is the space that's located around the thalamus, in this, this open <laughs> space area here. And um, the hypothalamus does a, a, a lot, lot of a lot. stuff. Um, it's, it's, it's responsible for your biological clock, so your circadian rhythms and, and <clears throat> how those get messed up or stay normal depending on, you know, if anybody works shift work or anything. 
your biological clock and circadian rhythms can get mixed up and your hypothalamus has to do with that. It also um, is responsible for um, visceral responses like you know, if you see something totally disgusting and it makes you want to throw up, that's what it's, <laughs> you know, or blushing if you get embarrassed. Um, it's, um, it also integrates the functions of your uh, autonomic nervous system, like your um, intestinal tract, your blood vessels, your heart, your, you know, things that you can't consciously control it helps regulate those functions in response to other stimuli. It yeah. also regulates rhythms. It, I read it, it regulates rhythm, body rhythms and changes in mood, sleep cycles, and mental alertness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you wanted to list it out, here's another way to list out the same exact thing what, what Gail just said. It regulates body temperature, your food, or, food and water intake, controls the heart rate, controls your blood pressure, your breathing rate, digestion, which is talking about the visceral organs, digestion, and would it, would it, you would die. Without it, <laughs> cut that part out. Without it, you would die. Okay, we'll just put die if you lose your hypothalamus. Yeah. So this one's pretty, pretty important, huh? It's big. Well, it's little, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit, but it's big. Good. All right, thank you. Brain stem. Okay, so brainstem is in the middle towards the bottom of the brain. It's, it's connected to the spinal cord. It's part of the brain that connects to the spinal cord. It's shaped like a microphone. <laughs> does anybody else want to say what it does? Um, yeah, the major parts uh, uh, consist of the medulla, med medulla, medulla oblongata, pons, and the midbrain. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, it's basically the superhighway that connects the brain to the spine, and all messages between the brain and the spine go through this part. Again, without it, you'll die. <laughs> yes. You will die. Have it severed. <clears throat> yes. All, All right. right, good job, you guys. Well, we what do you want to start with? We pictured this, this, these three areas, as looking like a seahorse, with the top being the the head of the seahorse and the kind of extension out of the nose, and then moving down, and that would be the the midbrain, and moving down to the pons, which would be the body, and the medulla, which would be the tail. And then the other area of the midbrain kind of forming a fin on the back of the seahorse. Um, the midbrain is uh, responsible for visual reflexes, eye movements, um, auditory reflexes. It also um, assists with writing reflexes, for example, keeping our heads upright and also maintaining balance and equilibrium. And the pons, which is the, the bulge here. Um, it has to do with our respiratory center and it produces our normal breathing um, rhythm. Okay, and then the <coughs> medulla oblongata are what we call vital signs. So it deals with like heart rate, um, the diameter of the blood vessels, regulates breathing, um, re reflexes such as coughing and sneezing. And because it uh, controls the vital signs, we cannot survive very long without that. Yeah, so the medulla oblongata is really important. Everyone say that. Medulla oblongata. Okay, and it's responsible for, it's extremely important for the homeostasis keeping your heart rate the same, your blood pressure the same, your breathing, <laughs> coughing, sneezing, swallowing, vomiting, all come from the medulla oblongata. And yep, just like these guys said, pons helps you breathe smoothly, controls your breathing rate. Uh, midbrain controls the reflexes related to your sight and hearing. Um, 